we're going to be talking about how you can turn chewed up gun and unwanted gum into something that's actually useful. Now, the reason I love this topic is that it comes with one of those founder stories that we love so much. So let's talk about Anna Bullis, and I'm hoping that I'm not butchering her last name. Anna was a student. She was very interested in figuring out what you can do with waste materials like cigarette butts and like the bags that people, you know, eat their chips and just throw on the sidewalk if there was a way to upcycle it. And she found out through her research that chewing gum is actually the number one thing that people discard the most. So she took this idea to London Metropolitan University and was like, hey, can we do something with it? Can we create a new material out of it? And after three years, the fruit of her labor, uh, the fruit of her labor was called gum tech. Gum tech is made up of at least 20% um, recycled gum and you can use it to create boots you can use it to create shoes soles you can use it to create phone case covers you can use it to create coffee cups a bunch of different things like a lot of applications in it and i'm going to hit you with it it's all about the secret sauce so what is the secret sauce gum is made up of this polymer called polyisobutylene or butyl rubber and it's very similar to polypropylene and polyethylene. What's interesting about this material is that although it's similar in its structure, where it has an advantage is being impermeable to gas. So where you've most seemingly interact, probably interacted with it is the lining of a basketball or the lining of your bicycle. Uh, yeah, I've designed, designed products before where we use butyl rubber to seal air. So... That it's kind of weird oh. to think that that's the same thing that's in synthetic. That chewing. you're chewing, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I sense that ingredient isn't biodegradable, right? Yeah, so that's what I was gonna say. I didn't know that it was made of that either, and it turns out it's not biodegradable. I always thought it was. So I, I thought like if you, um, you know, just throw your gum into the street or whatever, after some time it just degrades back into the earth. Apparently, that's not the case. Gum, depending on what brand you're chewing, can take five to one thousand years to actually degrade, um, okay, so which stop really sucks. Your gum for both. I hey hey, I only <laughs> chew completely natural gum that's made out of like I don't know rice syrup or whatever. So it's definitely not coming from me. I can assure you. But what's interesting about this is that you know if you've ever been to a school, you know that kids just stick the gum underneath like desks. So you have this waste. And there's no way that it's going away on its own. So we need to scrape it off or do something with it. And if you've been you know, in a city, you know that people just throw this stuff on their ground. This is a good way of clearing up that like clutter and actually giving it a purpose, like turning it into something else. And to actually point out a number, there was a city that reduced their gum litter by 81% by utilizing um, these bins that uh, Gumdrop is using to collect wasted gum. Okay, so this company, Gumdrop, has got these bins for you to deposit your chewed gum in and start yes. littering. And it's kind of got this like nice feel-good sensation to it because I'm spitting out my gum instead of putting it on the ground or on the mm -hmm. railing outside. It's being used to be turned into something new. Is that the main way they get the gum, or do they also get it from other places? Because it seems like it'd be hard to rely specifically on consumers putting their gum in a little bin to make high volumes of this material. You're, you're always on top of it, man. I love it. So that's not actually the only way they're getting it. They are, you know, taking that wasted gum that no one really cares about, but they're also going to the factories. They partner with, I think, Wrigley, which is a gum manufacturer, and they're taking the unwanted gum that hasn't been touched by the consumer yet, and they're upcycling that as well. So, okay. so like before the consumer and after consumer, both pre and post consumer, yep. they're getting this waste gum and turning it into these, these, uh, this material. Where is it being used? So, like, are there any notable uses of it? I feel like, for me, my default is to be pessimistic or cynical and say, you know, this is a gimmick. So, are there any, like, notable examples of the material being used? Yeah. So, Adidas Stan Smith, very, very famous sneaker. There's actually a model that's made using this gum tech material. Oh, that's cool. um, The company, Gumdrop, actually makes their own, uh, what is it, rain boots. And what's interesting about the rain boots is that you can wear it and if it ever gets beat up, you can send it back to them and they're going to recycle it 100%. And in doing so, they'll even give you a really nice discount so that you can come back and get another pair of boots. That's so pretty cool. 
boots and shoes is probably the most uh, relatable application that I can offer now, but they did state that they make like phone case covers, coffee cups, all the good stuff. So basically anywhere, the polypropylene or polyethylene you were talking about, wherever those are used is where you can use gum tech as well? Yeah, and they, they mentioned that gum tech can be mm, injection molded or blow molded. I, okay. I think those are the two methodologies they stated. So standard manufacturing processes that you can use for polyethylene, poly, polypropylene. Okay, so is all of gum tech this recycled gum or is it a percentage of it? Did you mention that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it has to be a minimum. It, it it is a minimum of 20%. So depending on what your end goal is, they can mess with that composition. So it's some, some sort of composite material. Okay, yeah. I, I've got a little bit of hesitation there just from experience designing injection molded parts, knowing that it's not uncommon to have an injection molded part with 20% fillers just to reduce the cost. So in this case, like maybe it's not anything special that it's the gum or maybe they're just using it as a filler and it's not affecting the mechanical properties but i guess there's you know i'm being super cynical here and just removing the entire factor of like we're removing waste and finding a good way to use it so turning I, something that's a burden into a resource yeah i don't think you're being cynical at all like that makes sense you know chances are that by adding this gum you might not be increasing the mechanical strength as you would if you added i don't know like carbon fiber or something along those lines. But like you said, what you're doing is that you're taking this waste that literally has no use and it just takes up space underneath desks or on sidewalks and you're making something useful out of it. You're upcycling it. Um, what the end benefit is, who knows? Maybe it's, yeah. it, it's just a cheaper additive than what um, manufacturers would be using anyways. And I guess like at a minimum, we can focus on the numbers that we do know which is it reduced littering in the town that they tested in by over 80%. 81%. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a win all on its own. It, it definitely is. Imagine if we had that when we were in elementary school. That would have been yeah. wonderful. Yeah, save, save the janitors a lot of time.